My old man had a saying when something was so sickeningly bad and the behaviour of a person was so grotesquely appalling, he would simply say, this is the bottom of the birdcage. Amidst all the dishonesty about the coronavirus scaremongering, alarmism, heartlessness, indifference, an absence of care from politicians and bureaucrats, we have today reached the bottom of the birdcage. We have a Prime Minister almost in tears making an emotional plea to Anastasia Palaszczuk to allow a young woman to attend her father's funeral. The young woman is quarantined in Canberra. The funeral was at 2pm today. The Prime Minister lost his own father this year. He seemed on the verge of breaking down. He urged Premier Palaszczuk to relent and allow this Canberra woman to leave her hotel quarantine and attend the funeral. And the Prime Minister ironically said, quote, it's not about borders, it's not about federation, it's not about politicians and it's not about elections. Well, unfortunately, Prime Minister, it is because there are politicians and bureaucrats who are making it all about borders and all about them. The Prime Minister said, to be fair to him, quote, the only thing that matters today is that Sarah can be with her 11-year-old sister Isabel and her mother Myrna while they mourn the passing of their father and husband Bernard at Mount Gravatt. The Prime Minister said, quote, that is the only thing that matters today. Anastasia Palaszczuk, who, as you know, I know well, I simply cannot believe what she's gone on with today. But Anastasia Palaszczuk, you have debased the office of Premier. She said she would not be bullied, nor will she be intimidated by the Prime Minister of this country. He contacted me, she said, this morning, and I made it very clear that it was not my decision. I made it clear I would pass his comments on to the Chief Health Officer and it is her decision to make. So there you are. We now know who's running Queensland. This unqualified, and I stress unqualified, Jeanette Young. She became Chief Health Officer when the title didn't mean anything. She takes a whacking salary and behaves as if she runs the joint, and it's clear from today now that she does. Just before we go on, just listen to her explain today why she lets in AFL players and movie stars, but not grieving families. I've given class exemptions to people in the sporting industry for a whole range of codes because it's important that we start that work, but they all go into quarantine. I've given exemptions to people in entertainment and film because that's bringing a lot of money into this state. I mean, you just shake your head. The woman is clueless, absolutely clueless, and I'm telling you, unqualified for the job. The Health Minister's office at noon today confirmed that Sarah would be allowed to have a private viewing at the funeral home after the service, but she wouldn't be allowed to attend the service itself. The Prime Minister said the 26-year-old woman had applied for an exemption to travel to Queensland from Canberra. There have been no coronavirus cases in Canberra for more than 60 days. The 26-year-old wanted to see her father before he died of terminal cancer. He died. She had waited 20 days to hear about an exemption. So not only couldn't she see her father who was dying, she was also in quarantine and couldn't attend the funeral. Now, remember, 99% of these cases are mild, 26 years of age. Not one person her age has died from coronavirus in this country. The Prime Minister said of this young 26-year-old, and I quote, she missed the opportunity to see her father before he died, and this is her last opportunity to say farewell to her dad. Now, all of us have been through that process. We know how important a day like today is. It is still fresh in my mind and he became emotional. It was a splendid performance on that front by the Prime Minister, but only up to a point. It was a performance which proved that the Prime Minister of this country is powerless. Anastasia Palaszczuk she said she was not going to be bullied or intimidated by the Prime Minister. He wasn't trying to do either, Anastasia. He was trying to appeal to your innate decency. That's all. Anastasia Palaszczuk, can I say this to you? Slowly. I think your paternal grandparents were Polish. You've talked about your grandfather's experiences in World War II, where he was sent to work on a farm and there was a shed at the top of the hill. The German farmer's wife told your grandfather to go inside. When he did, there was a table set up with bread and cheese and a glass of wine. She told your grandfather to eat and drink. He was starving, but he wouldn't. He thought it was a trick. The wife called her farmer husband, who also told him to eat. He thought if he didn't, they'd shoot him. He really thought they were about to kill him. He decided to take the risk. And Anastasia Palaszczuk, you once said, and I quote, the experience gave Leo Palaszczuk the b basic belief in the decency of most people. The basic decency 
of most people. Your grandfather, Anastasia Palaszczuk, fled Europe after World War II and ended up at the Wakehole migrant camp in Western Brisbane. Premier, you now represent that electorate. Your grandfather was the beneficiary of basic decency. Yet despite all the luck and compassion that's been shown to your family, it looks as though the lust for power has removed your own sense of basic humanity and decency. What is worse, Premier, you're only a Premier in name. You said today, quote, I'm very disappointed the Leader of the Opposition would come in here and ask a very personal and sensitive issue when the Leader of the Opposition knows it's not my decision. So there you are. In my old man's language, we've reached the bottom of the birdcage. This whole coronavirus business has been dominated by lies, dishonesty, misrepresentation and now heartlessness, carelessness, cold-blooded, emotional and psychological bullying. That's what it is. But, Prime Minister, can I say this to you? Go to your department today and ask them to give to you, for your personal citing, emails which will express exactly the concerns which Sarah has expressed. The only difference is you've been made familiar with Sarah's predicament. I have a stack of them on my desk. There was a gentleman the other day with fewer than five weeks to live, but his sons couldn't visit him on his deathbed because, Prime Minister, you're running a national cabinet which has no empathy, no heart, no ability to walk in someone else's shoes. We're no better than the KGB. We're no better than North Korea and Vladimir Putin. And we have an elected Prime Minister of Australia today. I'm not being critical of him. His language was splendid. But he's proven today he's a Prime Minister without power. There was nothing he could do for Sarah. Yet there are thousands of Sarahs around this country, Prime Minister. Something has to be done. I'll tell you something, Prime Minister. Tomorrow is September 11. We know what that anniversary is about. A leading lawyer wrote to me yesterday and his sentiments are relevant to today. He thanked me for what I've said about having a national advertising campaign to tell people the truth. And he said, and I quote, the trust that government needs in a crisis has been absolutely incinerated. He went on, it's the September 11 anniversary on Friday. Imagine if we had a crisis now like that, where the public's trust was needed by government. Who would trust a single thing they were told by any tier of government now. Well, this is where the national cabinets, belligerent, arrogant, uncaring, unthinking, dishonest, non-consultative behaviour, this is where it's brought us. Sarah now is a metaphor of a great problem. And that problem is the virtual collapse of democracy, which is meant to be government of the people, by the people, for the people. Not government by arrogant, gutless and heartless politicians. No wonder Winston Churchill said, the best argument against democracy is a five-minute conversation with the average voter. Prime Minister, you've had one such conversation today. Sarah speaks for all Australians. Government in this country today is a disgrace. What do you think? Alan at skynews.com.au. And by the way, Sarah wasn't allowed in. The same disgraceful Chief Health Officer and her Premier happily ushered in all those rich Victorians but say no to a woman who wants to visit her dying father. Anastasia, what do you think your Polish grandfather would say to you today?